Shiu, Oshi Kwotzu, welcome to the Red Road East. I'm your host, Fierce Truth Seeker. The Red Road East is an indigenous TV program dedicated to preserving and promoting the culture, legacy, and history of indigenous Americans east of the Mississippi River and the Caribbean. Today's show, we will be joined by the co-founder of the Cherokee Language and Cultural Center. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back, and we are joined with my guest, Two Feathers. Shio Nokwe. Shio. All right. Good to have you, brother. It's good to be here, and thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I guess we can start uh, at the beginning. What inspired you to teach the Cherokee language? Um, as a kid, uh, I grew up in North Carolina. Um, with my mother's parents and my great-grandmother on both sides are actually Cherokee descent. Mm. But I decided that um, it was so much confusion because people of color were colored, then we shifted to Negro, then we shifted to African American, then we shifted to black. And I've always felt a native connection in my life. So mm. I decided to honor my great-grandmother by following the path that she walked. Mm, wow, wow. I guess she was pretty much instrumental in passing on. You know. Like in most African-American um, families, it is well known that we are, have native blood, but it is a secret. <laughs> so it, it's hardly ever spoken of. Um, it's not brought out. And my great-grandmother never really talked about her nativeness, mm. but the way she carried herself, the way she dressed, definitely identified herself as a native woman. Mm, mm. Wow. What do you think is the reason for a lot of that secrecy? Um, a lot of Native Americans, especially growing up in the late 1800s, early 1900s, always thought that the government would round up all the Indians again and move them west. So it was a way to stay in the homeland on the east. Mm -hmm. But they had to go on at underground. The darker ones passed themselves off as African Americans or black at the time, and the lighter ones passed as white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's sad that the way that, you know, they had to survive and wound up, it, it, was, it was like, it was like a catch-22 because at the same time, you lost your rights to, you know, the land and right. all the benefits that come with that. Yes. You know? You had to, had to um, do a different identity to survive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us in the uh, African-American community we are here only because our grandmothers were strong. Mm. That's true. That's true. Yes. Wow. Fast forwarding to the uh, Cherokee Language and Cultural Center, what inspired you to take that task? Um, I, I give creator praise. Um, I was always looking for a, a way to get in the door mm. because it is a culture. Um, and I met uh, a, an elder. Walter Red Eagle, who started teaching me the language and taking me under his wing. But it's always important for me to not only say that I am Cherokee, but to be Cherokee in every way possible. Mm. And learning the language makes the culture. Mm. In every culture, there's a language. And um, for you to immerse yourself, you should learn the language. Mm. That is true. Is it difficult to learn, like to say like how Spanish and French, is it more difficult? Uh... It is difficult because Cherokee is a language made of sounds. Sounds make words. So it's not like English, hello, or Spanish, hola. Mm -hmm. um, in Cherokee, we would say, for instance, hello, she mm -hmm. 
but there's a certain twang you have to get your tongue, see? Mm. She yo. So there's a rhythm and, and, and a certain movement that goes with the language that you have to learn also. It's almost, it's almost uh, Chinese a little bit. Some, yes. Somewhat. Very melodic. Yeah, melodic. That's the word I was looking for, yes, melodic. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Are there a lot of speakers, a lot of Cherokee language speakers? Not outside of the reservation. Mm -hmm. um, there are two types of natives. There are reservation natives who grew up on reserves, and then there are what they call urban native people who have native backgrounds but didn't grow up immersed in the culture. Mm -hmm. I happen to be what you would call an urban, non-reservation Native American. Likewise, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, like, let's look at, because um, I, I know that even on the reservation, they talk about the challenge of the language continuing. Uh, well, recently, um, I know down in Kuala, which is the North Carolina reservation, um, they started teaching um, the language again to the younger people. Um, with any language, it's always easier to learn if you start out young as opposed to when you get my age and you try and start out, it makes it twice as hard to, to learn. Yeah, yeah. But to keep the culture alive, you need to have the language. Mm -hmm. How many young people are interested in learning the Cherokee language? A lot of people are interested, but there's a difference between interested and dedication. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people like to dance and like, like to dress up. But very few people actually can speak other than just a few words, like, hello, how are you? And that's about it, you know, and, and farewell. Mm -hmm. But it's a whole dynamic. Even for me right now, it is a work in progress. Because mm -hmm. I didn't grow up under tutelage, you know what I mean? So um, I'm learning through books and tapes and, and mostly studying on my own. Mm. But I would like to share it with those who are really interested in learning. Mm, mm. Not showing, but learning. Learning, yeah. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah, and I mean, you, you've you been a soldier in this for a long time. <laughs> um, almost 20 years. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I started I in 1996. Wow. Mm. And um, like in 1998, we came up with the Cherokee Language and Cultural Circle. We became a 501c. Okay. Wow. Nonprofit. Yeah, I remember you in, in uh, Red Eagle back in the days. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> Doing your thing. Yes, sir. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will take a look at the Cherokee syllabary. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Okay, we're back. And right now, we're going to take a look at the Cherokee syllabary. And Two Feathers is going to explain that syllabary for us. Um, good afternoon. Um, first thing I would like to say, it is a syllabary. It is not an alphabet. Okay. The, the difference between a syllabary and an alphabet is that the sounds make the words as opposed to the letters making the words, like in English, hello. Mm. Um, in Cherokee, it's, it's different. Um, there's about 86 characters. There's about 76 different um, versions of Cherokee spoken, depending on where you're from. Uh, people in Texas don't speak like people in Arkansas. People in Mississippi don't speak like people in um, North Carolina, so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, Cherokee has always been a spoken language. And Sequoia, who was, uh, had a Cherokee mother, didn't speak any English, but had a white father, developed this syllabary. It took him over 16 years to actually complete it. Mm -hmm. And so he made it so that Cherokees could write Cherokee. Remember, the spoken word has always been spoken. Right, right. But he gave them a chance to have the written word. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the top line here, you see the D, the R, the T, uh, the symbol for O, the U, and the I is on. Um. Well, that is the vowels. The top line are vowels, and everything underneath are consonants. OK, so explain that. So now the what looks like the D is the, actually The sound ah. of ah. Right. The A is ah. Mm -hmm. The R is E. Ah, A, E, O, U, uh. Oh. Uh. But and that's that thing that looks like a I. Right. Mm -hmm. But or if you- should I say that character, rather? Yeah, that character. But it's the same sounds are in Spanish. Ah, A, E, O, U. Exactly. So it shows you how close related it is to another um, form of language. Mm -hmm. And explain that second line there. Actually, you could go through the... the. Well, um, you can learn the syllabary because the top line there, there are one, two, three, four, five, six columns. The sound at the top goes all the way down each column. For instance, ah, ga, ka, ha, la, and so on. A, ge, he, le, me, and so on. So um, when you're learning the syllabary, some people learn it across, some people learn it down. But the sounds are the same for each column. And the last sound is like, uh. And when I use that sound, it is like saying, donkey, don, don. Well, that's the sound, uh, don. So it would be, uh, gon, huh. Non, non, quan, and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's very nasal and it's very melodic when you're actually speaking it. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have to train your tongue. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Mm. Wow. And how long does it take one to master those uh, sounds? For myself, it took me six months to learn the syllabary going forward and backward. Mm -hmm. And that's when you can tell when you've mastered it. When you can start at the last letter and go yon, you, ye, ye. Could you point to that again for the? Yon, mm -hmm. you, yo, ye, ye, ya. And go all the way back to ah. And when you can do it forward and do it backward, then you know you have mastered the syllabary. <laughs> but you also have to not only master the sound, but the symbol. Because if you look, a lot of things are similar. Like ga looks a lot like de. Right, exactly. Um, you have la, which looks like ta. But each character has its own significant symbol that makes you know this is the sound you're trying to, to write or mm. pronounce. Mm. Now, um, Sequoia used to see people reading letters. And even though he didn't speak English, he wanted his people to be able to write to each other. Mm -hmm. So it's a mixture of Latin, Greek, English, and numbers. Mm. 
as you can see, say is the number four. Um, um, and there's another number in here like, um, this looks like an upside down nine. Woo. Mm -hmm. So he took him 16 years. He's the only person who, as an individual, came up with a written language. Yeah, I noticed that back in the days. And uh, one looks like a six. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So it's a combination of, like I say, multiple languages, and he combined them to make one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Um... It's, it's, it's a very uh, interesting language. Yeah. Yes. I remember I, I, I used to have this down pat, like forward, backwards, right. upside down. But, you know, it's like when you don't have somebody to speak with, you know, on a regular basis. Use it or lose it. Yeah, use it or lose yeah. it, you know. <laughs> well, now you have somebody to speak with. True, true. Or shut on. True. Knockley uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. means brother. So, knockley, chiwoni chalagi. So, um, then from there, after one masters the syllabary, what's the next approach, the way that you teach? Um, the way that I teach, I try and use the things that you would use in everyday language. For instance, start out with the days of the week, because that's something that's repetitive. You know what I mean? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we go back to Monday, Tuesday. So once you learn that, um, numbers, colors, animals are something you can use in everyday life. Mm. Um, uh, such as, um, for example, Monday is the first day on the Cherokee calendar, not Sunday. So Monday would be una do da no Sounds long, but it is what it is. Most mm. people want to break it down and be like, well, why is it like this way? It is what it is. Don't, mm. don't break it down, just accept it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I teach things that you can use so you can get used to the tongue and pronunciation, mm. and then you can move on from there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, so we'll take a quick break and we'll come back. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back, and now we're going to continue with Two Feathers. Yeah, so, wow, that was uh, very informative, uh, well, Two Feathers. thank you. I, I, like I say, I don't come from the reservation. It's not like I grew up with this language, but I, I try because to maintain the culture, the language is necessary. Yes, it is. Yes. It is, it, and it's hard, you know, because, like you say, if you didn't grow up, on the reservation, you know, then you're basically trying to piece together, you know, all that was lost and reclaim yes, sir. all that was lost. Yes, you know? sir. Yeah. I, like I said, for me, it's just, um, when I started out, I saw a lot of pretty Cherokee people or a lot of pretty native people. But to me, in a serious way, it's not about looks. It's about the language and the culture. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. 
And do you see the Cherokee language one day being respected, uh, like, on the level of the other languages, like, being, like, taught like a, a second language in universities and stuff like that? I, I see it becoming that, um, as, as you know, with any language. All people get curious. I, I, because I worked at the passport office, I picked up, like, seven Japanese, Chinese. I'm not fluent, but enough to, to have a small conversation, Spanish, Italian, German, uh, and Russian. So, wow. Um, with any language, you, you have to start slow and you build your vocabulary. Yeah. You know? Mm, mm. Wow, seven languages. Yep. Gale mm. Kwogi. Wow. That's deep. Uh, or star. <laughs> Thank you. Thank it you. But deep. it takes energy. It takes, like I said, you don't study, you won't, you won't master this language. You have to put in the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And most people learn in school and then they don't go home and follow through. And that's where they, the diaspora comes because if you don't study it, like you say, how are you going to speak it if you don't study it? It's like English. Yeah. You know, if you don't read and write, then you won't speak. Mm-hmm. Properly. Properly, yeah, properly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And what do you think about, because uh, I know y'all teach uh, the culture also now. Let's right. talk a little bit about the cultural aspect of what you do. Well, um, like I said, you have to understand that it comes from the East. And once the uh, Trail of Tears happened, a lot of the different tribes, such as the Muscogee and the Creek and the Choctaw, um, a lot of the Seminoles, they got mixed in together, so the language became muddled. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, for instance, in North Carolina, this particular row here, the S row, is S-A, but they pronounce it Sha. Mm -hmm. Sha, S, She, She, Sho, Shu, Sho. Right. But in Oklahoma, it is Sa. Mm -hmm. Sa, se, si, so, su, son. So depending on what part of the east of the Mississippi or west of the Mississippi, it, the dialect can change. Right. That, that when I was studying it, that's what I was learning, that eastern, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Most of the written material is in western. Yeah, yeah. Most of it. But every now and then you'll find um, some eastern... Mixed books in. Oh. mixed in, um, mm -hmm. like Juna Kaloshka from North Carolina. She has an edition of some words. And they are, I guess they're coming out with some new books that come out from the Koala Boundary, which mm. is available to people. Wow. But it's hard to find unless you are on the reservation. Mm. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, I know you have some pretty good books in your arsenal. Uh, yeah, I've, hey, I've, I've been doing this quite a while, and um, it, it's always good. One of the books that I would recommend if people can, um, this is called the Cherokee English and Cherokee Glossary, so it shows you how to translate words, and it also gives you a background. Hold, hold yeah, let me hold that yeah. up. Uh, Gives you a background the about, the, there so they, they can... about the Chalagi. And then you also have these flashcards, which also can help you learn the language. Yeah, I have these, the flashcards. Yes. Very helpful. Mm hmm Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's a, I, I got to get that book, uh -huh. <laughs> that big one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what year was that one? Um, um, doesn't really say. Mm -hmm. It's right here. I could tell you had it for a while because yeah. it's pretty beat up. Oh, yeah, 2004 it's, copywritten? Yep, it's, okay. it's, it's raggedy, but like you said, you tell <laughs> hey, that, That's how you know it's, it's been put to use. It's being put to use, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Not wow. for sure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Are you guys going to do the ceremonies again? You know, y'all were doing the green corn and y'all were doing, you know. Well, we, we had a bit of a following. 
Um, mm -hmm. What has happened over the years, we had a lot of elders um, and not so many young people. So mm -hmm. the elders got elder and of course with that comes illness. And So uh, we lost a lot of our, because we were self, self uh, efficient. We didn't mm -hmm. get grants. You know, all our money came from the individuals and that was the mm -hmm. way we maintained ourselves. Wow. But it got expensive, too expensive. So we couldn't um, maintain that, that type of input into the culture. Mm. So once we can get a gathering or a following, I'm sure we would put it together and, and, and like I say, not just do the language, but the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, Cherokee New Year is a lunar thing. It's um, every October, but it's lunar. And then the Cherokee culture, that was the, the time of the year you forgave your enemies and, and, and you just started out anew. You got new regalia. Um, you pass your old regalia on to people who are less fortunate. That was Cherokee way. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And we're lunar people, moon people. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, you know, um, whatever I can do, you know, to assist in you guys, you know, uh, right. continuing what you were doing, because it was beautiful, you know, because I don't think anybody else was doing that, you know, as, yeah. as far as like in the East Coast stuff. Yes, sir. You know. Yes. Well, I thank you for, for remembering and being there, and um, hopefully you and I will get a chance to uh, share this language together. Definitely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back, and then we will wrap up the show. Stay tuned. Okay, so Two Feathers, um, thank you for coming on the show. And we, you know, you definitely have a home here. All right. Well, okay. thank you for allowing me to be here. And I hope uh, that I have influenced other people to learn the Chalagi. Okay. Ski, which means East. thank you. Ski, no. All right. Definitely. Okay. So we don't say goodbye in Cherokee. We say until we meet again, don't a dog go hunt. That's right. That's right. Okay, so we're going to close out the show, and until the next time, da-da-da, gonna haunt you.